That brings up some final comments regarding TCPO2. TCPO2 is a screening test. It is meant to be used as a guide to decision making, taken in context with the other information you have available. Furthermore, what we have described over the past few minutes is a stepwise decision process. That is to say, you first perform a TCPO2 study to determine if a patient is likely to heal spontaneously. If their values are low, you would then perform a normobaric oxygen challenge. A poor response may indicate the patient has significant arterial disease, and your next step would be to order a more definitive test of the anatomy, like an angiogram. After revascularization, you might repeat the TCPO2 study. If the normobaric air values are still low, then you might consider an in-chamber test to determine whether hyperbaric oxygen therapy would be helpful, assuming the patient meets the criteria for this treatment. It will not be possible to perform one transcutaneous study and obtain all possible answers to all questions. Current evidence-based guidelines by every major professional organization emphasize the importance of vascular screening for all patients with non-healing leg ulcers. As a clinician, if you develop a protocolized approach for performing transcutaneous oximetry on all your leg ulcer patients, your confidence in this technology will increase and your patient outcomes will improve. Clearly, there is much more that we could discuss, but we hope this brief presentation has made you feel more confident in interpreting transcutaneous oxygen studies and will increase your utilization of this technology in caring for your patients. I'm Dr. Caroline Fife. Thank you for your attention.